Welcome to another episode of Chemistry, It Is All That Matters, and today we're going to look at atoms, and we're going to look at the subatomic particles that make up those atoms. So let's go into the atom. According to atomic theory, atoms are the building blocks of all of the elements. They are the building blocks that make the elements, and those elements make matter. What matter? The matter, the chair you're sitting upon, the desk that you're writing upon, the paper that's lying on the desk that you're writing on, the pen you're holding in your hand to take notes on that paper. All of those things are matter. You are matter. The air you breathe is matter. So what is that matter composed of? It is composed of atoms, and those atoms are elements, and those elements compose all of the universe that we live in. Now, atoms of the element are all similar. So all aluminum atoms are the same. All oxygen atoms are the same. All sodium atoms are the same. They have similar properties, similar characteristics. Now there are some various differences that may come about that change the mass or the charge of the atom and we'll go into that further in depth in later episodes. Now those elements or atoms are also different based on the element. So a oxygen atom is different from a nitrogen atom and there are diff those differences determine how those atoms will react with each other and with themselves. Now if you have two or more different atoms bound together then you form compounds or molecules and it is the molecules that actually interact to form the matter that we're dealing with. Now actually Atoms aren't the smallest unit because atoms are actually made up of smaller units called subatomic particles. And there are three basic subatomic particles that we will deal with. The neutrons, the protons, and the electrons. Now, we actually oversimplify the structure of the atom. And usually you'll see the atom written something like this, where it looks like a solar system with a sun in the middle and planets revolving around the sun and what those actually represent is how atoms are pictured in our minds and makes it easier for us to deal with them but that center section of the atom is the nucleus and the nucleus is composed of two of those subatomic particles the protons and the neutrons and then revolving very quickly around that nucleus are the smaller subatomic particles called electrons now how small are we talking about when we're talking about atoms? Well, the nucleus has a diameter of 10 to the negative 13th centimeters. That would be a 1 with 12 zeros in front of it, so point 12 zeros, then a 1. And if you're talking about the entire atom, the average atomic uh, diameter is about 10 to the negative 8. So, what is that in in the reality of our world well if you take that piece of paper that you're taking notes on and you turn it to look at the edge of the paper and you look at the thickness of the paper itself it would take approximately a million atoms lined up side by side to create the width of the paper the width of the paper the thickness of the paper so we're talking about small Now, when we're dealing with atoms, there are two very important characteristics of atoms that make them um, re able to react with other atoms, with other elements. So there are very two very important characteristics that we need to deal with with subatomic particles. The first is the charge of the atom, the electric charge of the atom. And this is created by the balances between the subatomic particles. Now electrons, which we represent by an E with a, with a tiny uh, superscripted negative charge, have a negative charge. And the protons, with its P, superscripted positive charge, have a positive charge. So typically when we're dealing with atoms, we're dealing with neutral atoms, and what we mean by neutral is the positive and negative charges will be balanced. For every positive, there will be one negative. So that gives us a charge or a neutral charge on the atom. So that charge would be zero. Now, neutrons, they have no charge whatsoever. Neutral means 
no charge or no uh, no value to it so neutrons have no charge so what is the value of the neutrons well when we look at the structure of the atom the neutrons do something to help hold the nucleus together and we'll talk about that in just a second so when we look at the atom and we go even deeper into the atom and we look at the very center of the atom we're looking at the nucleus now the nucleus is a highly compacted very dense structure of protons and neutrons protons being positively charged neutrons being negatively uh, neutrally charged no charge whatsoever and it is this arrangement of the protons and neutrons that give the structure of the atom this is the densest part of the atom and this is where most of the mass of the atom is found in the center or nucleus of the atom now for oversimplification we show that the electrons are flying around in these orbits now the electrons are so small and they move so fast that they rotate very quickly um, around the nucleus and what happens is the protons are positive and electrons are negative. Well, we know opposites attract. Opposites attract. So shouldn't these very tiny electrons be flying into the center of the atom because the protons, which are positive, should be attracting those negative electrons? But what's happening is the electrons move so quickly that their speed actually overcomes that that attraction between the positive and negative charges. So this is an oversimplification of how those electrons are arranged in orbits around the nucleus and we use this model which is called the Bohr model to help us kind of manipulate how the electrons act. But actually those electrons are not in orbits, they are actually in orbital clouds and they don't path, they don't travel in a very particular path like a the moon travels around the earth or the earth travels around the sun but these electrons actually just fly randomly through this orbital cloud so and the orbital cloud based on how large the atom is it gets different as the atom gets larger and larger so these are three of the examples of orbital clouds there's an s orbital which is a simple sphere and then there are p orbitals that actually work on all three axes so there's an x-axis pair and a y-axis pair and a z-axis pair and then when we get to the d orbitals which are really highly complex but we'll talk about that later in the year um, there is just an arrangement of how the electrons can fly randomly about the nucleus the other thing that is important about the atomic structure is the mass of the atom. And the mass of the atom is created by how these three subatomic particles are arranged uh, in the nucleus and in the orbitals around it. Now, protons have a gram mass of 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th. Now, if 10 to the 13th is really small, what is 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th. So this is such a small number. And you'll notice that neutrons also have a, that same number. So protons and, nuclei, and neutrons have basically the same gram mass. Now, because this number is so small, and it would be so wieldy to deal with in calculations, chemists have actually converted that to what we call AMUs. And each one of those gram values is called an atomic mass unit, an AMU. So protons, 1.67 times 10 to the negative 24th, is actually equal to 1 AMU. Neutrons, likewise, have that same value, so they are also equal to 1 AMU. Now electrons, their mass is actually 9.1 times 10 to the negative 34th, which is actually about five thousandths uh, smaller than the mass of the proton and the neutron. So the electron's mass is so minute and they move around so quickly around the nucleus that the AMU value for an electron is zero. So their mass is really negligible when we talk about the mass of the atom. 
So when we talk about the mass of the atom, we're simply dealing with the mass found in the nucleus, and therefore if you add up the values of the proton AMUs and the neutron AMUs, you'll get the mass of the atom. And the mass of the atom is measured in atomic mass units, also known as AMUs.